Hello YouTube viewers, hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this video. I'm Venkat and this is Just Me an Open Source channel. In this video, we are going to look at packet bait. In the previous video, we saw about uh, audit bait. So if you want uh, to follow other beats, if you want to know how to install and configure uh, the beats, which are lightweight log shippers, you can search in this Learn Elastic Search playlist or uh, series that I'm doing. So we've covered file beat, metric beat, hard beat, win log beat, audit beat, and the final beat I'm gonna cover is the packet beat. So uh, the setup for this demonstration will be, I'll be running Elasticsearch and Kibana as a Docker containers uh, in my Linux workstation. And I've also got a CentOS virtual machine uh, installed provisioned using Vagrant, Vagrant up. Uh, so I've got the Vagrant file to, pr uh, to bring up the CentOS virtual machine. and I will be installing packet bait on the CentOS virtual machine. If you've got Ubuntu virtual machine, you can also install packet bait on Ubuntu. Uh, I will also show you how you can do that. I will point you to the uh, documentation uh, about how to install packet bait on an Ubuntu machine. But for this demo, I'm gonna stick with uh, CentOS virtual machine. So let's see how to install packet bait, how to configure packet bait, how to send logs to the Elasticsearch and how to monitor and let's see what cool dashboards we are going to see and all those details, right? Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start Elasticsearch and Kibana as Docker containers. Git clone, I'm going to clone my ELK repository and cd to ELK and then to Docker. So I've got uh, Docker Compose version 7.1.1 YAML and the Docker Compose.yaml. So that's the one that I first did, which is based on Elasticsearch version 6.5.4. And since then, I did another video on how to run Docker containers using, uh, sorry, how to run Elasticsearch in Docker containers uh, for version 7.1.1. So for this demo, I'm going to be using the latest version uh, that I did. But this is not the latest version. I think the latest one is 7.3. something, 7.3.0 maybe. So move Docker Compose. When you do docker compose up or docker compose down, uh, the command expects a configuration file with this name. So that's why I'm moving that file. So now you can see I've got docker compose.yaml. I'm going to start the Elasticsearch and Kibana containers. If you have been following my, all my Elasticsearch videos, you know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to set up a kernel parameter without which the Elasticsearch container won't start fine. So if you don't do that command, if you don't set that kernel parameter, Elasticsearch container will start and then it will exit immediately. I've seen many viewers ask me that question that their Elasticsearch containers are not working fine. And then I point them uh, to this kernel parameter, which should then work. sudo sysctl minus w vm dot max map count equals 262144. You need to enable this kernel setting, otherwise Elasticsearch container will have problems starting up. All right. So that is not a persistent change. If you reboot your machine now, that system won't take, that that setting won't take effect. In order to make it permanent, you have to edit the etc sysctl.conf file and append just this option at the end of the file, all right? And then that should make the setting persistent no matter how many times you reboot. Okay, we've done that. So now we can do docker compose up minus T. That's going to bring up the Elasticsearch and Kibana containers, Docker volume ls. So it has also created a local uh, volume for Elasticsearch. So if you stop your Docker container and restart it again, uh, we have a Docker uh, volume for the Elasticsearch so that all the data that goes into the Elasticsearch will be persisted. Docker compose ps. So we have both the status up and it's running fine. Docker compose logs, docker compose logs minus F. Okay, status changed from yellow to green. So which means our services should be running. So now let's see if we can access our Kibana dashboard. Localhost colon 5601. Cool, so that's our Kibana dashboard loading. Fine, and if we go to index patterns, we won't have any index pattern because our Elasticsearch is completely empty. So once we install packet bit and start the packet bit service, it will start sending all the traffic data to Elasticsearch. And then we can see the index and the dashboards and everything. 
All right, so that's all I wanted from the uh, local Linux workstation. So I'm gonna exit that terminal. And on my CentOS virtual machine, I'm going to install PacketBeat now. For that, I'm going to look for Elastic Documentation. Install PacketBeat Elastic and here it is, install PacketBeat, the official documentation to install PacketBeat. So I'm going to install PacketBeat using the repository method. You configure your repository and then you install the package. And whenever there is an update, you can just do yum update and so on. It will make your life easier managing your package. Also, if you don't want to do that, you can download the Debian package or the RPM package directly and directly install it using dpkg-i or rpm-i. So I personally prefer using the repository method. So, excuse me. That's my light. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go to that link here. And if you're using Ubuntu, here are all the details. You need to basically run these commands to install uh, PacketBeat. So I'm going to go through to the yum instructions. So first let me copy that and paste it here. Okay, so next thing is to set up the uh, repository configuration file. sudo vi etc yum.repos.d slash elastic.repo and paste the content here. Okay, so now we are good to install uh, PacketBeat. Let's see if we've got any other steps, nothing. Okay, sudo yum install minus y packet beat. All right, so once the packet beat is installed, we'll be configuring packet beat and uh, it's gonna be very simple. Let me show you. RPM minus QC packet beat. So that's the configuration file for packet beat. And you can also check the help section, packet beat version. We've got the packet beat version packet beat help and those are the list of commands that's that are available okay so now let's edit the configuration file sudo vi etc packet beat packet beat dot yaml okay so what can we see here the first thing to note is packet beat dot interfaces dot device is any which means so on which interface uh, the traffic through which interface you want to monitor by default, it's set to any, so any interface that has active network uh, connection will be monitored uh, and, send, and the logs will be sent to Elasticsearch. So if you are interested in any particular device, you can say ETH0 or if you're on Wi-Fi, WLSP0, whatever it is, or WLAN0, whichever it is, but I'm gonna just say any, leave it as default any. So that's going to monitor all your, uh, all the traffic from all your network interface. Okay, packet beat flows, timeout 30 seconds, period 10 seconds, reporting period. So how often do you want to report the traffic or report the network uh, thing to your uh, Elasticsearch? 10 seconds. Okay, packet beat protocols. So what protocols are there? ICMP, it's enabled. Uh, Cassandra, DHCP, DNS, HTTP. So list of protocols if you want. If you're running a custom application, for example, you're running your own application, uh, which is listening on port uh, 3000 or 4000 or whatever it is, you can add it here. And then we have the templates. So as usual, we are going to enable the dashboard. So I'm going to uncomment this line. Sorry, setup.dashboards.enabled. I'm gonna uncomment that and change it to true because we are interested in looking at the dashboard not just the uh, raw logs we are also interested in looking at the dashboards so change that to true and then next we are going to set up our kibana uh, url so uncomment this line which says host so what we are basically doing is telling packetbeat where to find the kibana so kibana is learning on my local linux workstation and its ip address is here 192.168.1.81 192.168.1.81. Then finally, under the output section, you're going to change the URL for Elasticsearch output. So my Elasticsearch is running as a Docker container on my local Linux workstation. 
whose IP address is 192.168.1.81. Okay, so that's all it's needed. So now what we are going to do is we have configured the packet bit. Now we need to do some basic testing. It's always a good practice to test uh, whether your configuration files uh, are valid without any errors. So to do that, sudo packet bit test config. So config is okay, just to make sure that our configurations are looking good. And then we need to verify whether packet bit can talk to the Elasticsearch. So to do that, do this command, sudo packet bit test output. Okay, so that's our Elasticsearch URL, 192.168.1.81, which is my Linux workstation. And uh, talk to server, okay, which means this packet bit instance can talk to the Elasticsearch running on my machine. Version of the Elasticsearch running is 7.1.1, so we are all good now. And the next thing we're going to do is run setup command, sudo packet bit setup. So it's going to set up the index on the Elasticsearch server and it's also going to set up some Kibana dashboards for us. So it will make our life a lot easier when you look at uh, the logs through the dashboards. You will get some meaningful data out of it. So once that's done, we are good to start our packet bit service. sudo systemctl enable packet bit and then you can do sudo systemctl start packet bit or if you want to do both in one command, you can do enable minus minus now. So that's going to enable packet bit and it's also going to start the packet bit service. sudo systemctl status packet bit. Okay, cool. So packet bit is running. All right, so now we are good to look at our Kibana dashboard. Let's see what we are going to see. Okay. Let me maximize this screen. Okay, index patterns. There you go. So we have our index pattern packet beat. And if I go to discover, we should be able to see uh, our refresh, refresh. So we're not seeing anything right now because it hasn't sent any traffic information back to the Elasticsearch, all right? So let's do some network activity. So I'm gonna say ping google.co.uk. Okay, so it's pinging google.co.uk. Ping microsoft.com. Nope. Ping amazon.co.uk. So we are getting some network. So basically we are doing some network activity to see if uh, it sends the logs to the Elasticsearch server. Okay, if I click refresh now, yep. So now you can see we have some data that has come through to our Elasticsearch server. But we are actually interested in looking at the dashboard instead, okay? So on the left here, on the sidebar, the third icon here is the one for dashboard. So if I click on the dashboard, you see list of dashboards. So if you don't see this list of dashboards, either you have not enabled uh, the dashboards in uh, EDC packet bit, packet bit.yaml. You know, I uncommented that line and changed uh, to true, setup.dashboards.enabled to true, or you might not have run the packet bit setup command. So you need to make sure that you do those two things, otherwise you won't be able to see these dashboards. Okay, now let's look at what we can see in these dashboards. Uh, Cassandra, DHCP, DNS, flows, lots of dashboards specific to packet bait. So the one I'm going to look at is the overview. So that's going to give us an overview of everything. Okay, we already started seeing some graphs here. Okay, let's see what all we can see. DNS transactions. So that's because we did a ping to google.co.uk, amazon.co.uk, microsoft.com. We can see the DNS transactions here. Transaction type, ICMP, again the ping request that we did comes under, falls under the ICMP traffic. And we also made some DNS queries. So that's why you're seeing uh, the DNS and ICMP. And here, response time, error versus successful transaction. I think uh, Microsoft.com didn't return any valid uh, IP address. So I think that might be the error here. Error counts over time for ICMP and DNS, latency, histogram, and so on. Okay, so that's the overview. So that's looking good. And let's look at 
um, DNS overview. Okay, DNS overview, five count, and the number of bytes, server bytes. Okay, and error. DNS question types. A record, PTR pointer record, DNS client server spy. Okay. Uh, the response time that you get when you're querying for a DNS query. Okay, so a list of uh, uh, things that we have queried for the DNS, amazon.co.uk, Google and Microsoft.com. Okay, so no error, NX domain one, I think probably it's Microsoft.com that has resulted in the NX domain. Okay, so that's the DNS. And let's see what else we can see. Go back to overview. Um, DHCP, do we have any DHCP transactions? No, nope, because I'm not using the DHCP server on my uh, CentOS virtual machine. You don't see anything for that dashboard. Um, storage, NFS, we don't have NFS. We haven't installed MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, or Cassandra. But if you have installed uh, one of these databases on your client machine, then you will see traffic uh, to these as well. HTTP transactions, we don't have a HTTP web server running, so we don't have that one as well. TLS overview, nope, we don't have that. Let's look at the network flows. Okay, so we have some graphs here. Uh, source IP, destination IP, so network traffic between hosts. So that's my source IP and that's the destination IP. So from 10.02.15, and if I show my IP addresses here, so we have 10.0.2.15, we have 172.42.42.101, okay, and 192.168.1.81 is the um, IP address of my local workstation. So you see some network traffic flowing between my client machine and my local workstation. Uh, possibly that's the uh, uh, the packet bit sending data to the Elasticsearch. Okay, so that's the... Oh, sorry, wrong window. Okay, so that's the network flows. Okay, what else we can see? Overview, network flows, we saw DNS overview, uh, databases, we don't have anything else. Go back to dashboard. Cassandra, I think we've covered everything here. Flows, that's the one we just saw now. Okay. Um, I don't think I've got anything else to show in this demonstration. All right, thank you so much for your time. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.